everyone, this is Dr. Mo, and this is the first video of the Space Invaders project. Um, if you have not played Space Invaders, it's a classic. I would definitely find a website that will run it for you. Um, <clears throat> just so you can kind of see what the deal is with it. It's pretty old school, as you can see here. But it's pretty fun to play. And it's going to be a bit of a challenge to code. Not too bad, but it is going to take a couple of videos to get us through this. So <clears throat> in this first video, um, this is all I have. This is the only thing that we're going to try to get is we've got that cool little Space Invaders. That's our ship down there. And when I press the space bar, I have a little bullet fly out of it. Okay, so that's as far as we're going to get in this first video, but we are going to... Um, do that bullet using a class, so this is going to bring in some object-oriented programming. Um, like a lot of these advanced projects, I would not recommend diving into it if you're not familiar, at least with the basics of Allegro. You know, you've gotten through things like Pong, and you're able to work with fonts and images and things like that, because I'm not going to really explain that in depth in this video. Um, that being said, let's get started. So let's actually start, if you take a look over here, I've got a couple header files and multiple source files already. So the first one I want to point out is globals.h. At the moment I just have my um, frames per second and my screen width and height in there. We might be adding more to that. Next is bullet.h, and it's a pretty short file. The only thing we have in it at the moment is the class for our bullet. And it's pretty simple. The bullet, at the moment, we're going to have to add some more to this so it can potentially interact with our um, the UFO bad guys. But at the moment, it just has three private variables. It's X and Y position and a Boolean um, that keeps track of whether it's alive or not. In the public function section here, we've got some pretty standard functions. Something to initialize it, something to move it, something to kill it, something to draw it, and then this guy here that actually fires it. These three functions down here just are single line functions, which you'll see in a second. They just return information so the game knows certain things about the bullet. Here in bullet CPP is where we've actually written out a lot of the functions. So um, init bullet is kind of useless. I think we when we initialize it, we just set everything to zero. Move is simply moving the Y position of the bullet 10 pixels up per click of the game. If you want to make your bullet faster, of course, make this number bigger, although I think it's pretty close to what it is in the game. It already might be a little faster than it was in the game. Um, our move function also kills the bullet if it moves off the game window. Um, we'll need to do some checking later because we also want our bullet to... Uh, we want that Boolean value of alive to switch over to dead if it hits a UFO. Okay, um, here we are with fire. Um, the first thing the fire function does is it sets our bullet to be alive because it, you'll see in the main um, source file in a second, like we are only going to actually draw this thing if it's alive. And it also sets the X and Y position of the bullet to the spaceship, to our player's position. Um, so whatever we initialize it to, it's going to be rewritten over when it's fired. Wherever it is when it dies, it's going to be rewritten over when it's fired again. Okay, kill is pretty straightforward, just like in Breakout or other games like that. All it does is just um, <clears throat> causes the bullet to no longer be alive. Draw, we're using a simple rectangle uh, rectangle function. It's just really tall and skinny. And then, as I said, these last three functions just give us information. I did do these on the same line. Hopefully that's not confusing. If that bothers you, feel free to spread it out so it looks a little bit more like we're used to in class. But I was feeling kind of lazy there. All right, so now on to the main function. Sorry, yeah, the main file more in here than just the main function. So um, we are bringing in a lot of stuff to begin with. We'll probably add to that if we want to have fonts and things like that. Um, notice that the enumeration that holds our keys 
I have taken out key up and down because we're not going to use that. Our spaceship doesn't move up and down. He only moves left and right, and then space bar shoots. Um, same thing here. We adjusted the, uh, the array that keeps track of what has been um, pressed on the keyboard and what hasn't. It's not actually a huge deal if you leave those in there. Just make sure that you're aware of what the different values are holding. Um, here's where I'm loading my ship. If you are confused by this part, just make sure that you go back and rewatch or re-practice the Allegro images. Um, I was having some issues at first, so I just put this in as a check. It's, if things aren't working, um, if statements and see out statements are great ways to see what's going on. But we didn't see this pop up and we did see the picture pop up, so it's obviously fine. Unlike breakout, the nice thing with the bullets is we're just going to create one. And because I'm just throwing some dummy values in here because it doesn't really matter where it thinks it is until it's fired. So I just set it up at zero, zero, and um, we'll deal with that more in the timer section. Okay, standard Allegro setup here. Standard movement. When the space bar is, is clicked, I only want to fire my bullet when the space bar is clicked and it's not alive, meaning it's not already on the screen. Live means it's on the screen. So if it's not alive and the space bar has been pressed, yeah, sure, go ahead and fire it, okay? And when we fire it, we're going to set it to the player's XY position. I've added these numbers here because the JPEG that holds the... Um, the the ship the player ship is about 60 across so this gets him to be in about the middle and this just makes sure that he's <clears throat> coming out um not too far above or below the ship okay um if it already has been fired and it hasn't died yet so if it's on the screen then go ahead and move it upwards okay um we've got some input output stuff here so keyboard input let's just kind of skip that Here's our render section, as always, towards the bottom of our game loop. Um, we're only drawing the bullet if it's alive. And then I would recommend having the bullet be behind the ship. It looks kind of weird if it's popping out. I mean, unless you've got like a nice little laser cannon drawn on there. But I'm going with the, trying to go with the original 8-bit drawing. So um, there's that. It draws it, and then we just kind of go through the normal closing. So, um, yeah, so that's what we have so far. And next, we'll be starting to add some of the bad guys. All right, hope this was helpful. Good luck.